What's up? What's up? We are live. Monday Cinema Club. Last Monday Cinema Club of club, 2020. Club, 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 club. We made it. Um, <laughs> so what's up? I'm Dante Bosco. I'm Alice Rahmatullah for my Chinese fan. 大家好,我叫 Alice. For my Uyghur fans, Yaxshim Slab, bizim kino klubumuzla kelginla qarshamiz. Minang ismim Bahar Gül. To my Hulk, my Hulk fans, Bangarang. <laughs> For everyone, Bangarang! Yo, it's our last uh, Monday Cinema Club of the year. And for people that just joined us for the first time, Monday Cinema Club, me and Alice are filmmakers, actor, writer, producer, directors, and we are um, just been watching a lot of movies during COVID, as I'm sure a lot of you have, and we decided to just talk to you guys about it. Talk to you guys. Why not? Why not? Um, hello, Phantom Wolf from Wisconsin. What's going on? Uh, Danny Nine Greenwood, chocolate loving dinosaur. What's popping? What's um, popping? What's popping? Uh, so, but the, we decided to close the year out with a classic because we've been going through it. It's like a book club, but it's a movie Holy. club. We watch movies every week. Yeah. So um, this is since this is our last season, uh, last episode should be. Uh, I can't believe we did a whole year. I know. We've done like so, 29, 30 movies. I think we're the 30th film of the year. I know. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. Thank you guys um, for rolling with us. I know. It's, this is mean mean a lot for us. And then um, every week we watch for a film and we talk about it. And it's just like a book club. It's a cinema club. This is the last episode for the year, for 2020. So we decided to watch Movie Hook. Hook. Yeah, well, and it's anybody it's a in movie. this group. I just saw I just saw the homie Zelda Williams, uh, Robin's daughter, in the chat. I want to send uh, to you. Hi. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Merry Christmas. Um, and we're talking about Hook, which is so, crazy. I'm wearing a vintage Hook shirt today, you guys. I got a vintage. One of my, that's one of my shirts. I borrow it. I know you borrowed it, but you know so. that's it's one of my own merch. That's Rufio Zuko stuff. Rufio Zuko. Uh, I mean, that's not Rufio's. It's a, it's a Polaroid. It's Bang Ring 91. Bang yeah, Ring 91 Bang Polaroid, Polaroid shirt. Polaroid I came Polaroid up with Polaroid shirt. from my own collection. I love it. And then, so why not? Because we're talking about movie Hook. Yeah, so today we're talking about Hook. We've been talking about classic cinema films through the whole year. Great ones. I mean, before we get to Hook, which we're there, we're going to bring people in to talk about it and share stories and just talk about the film. But it's been a great year. We've been watching a lot of movies. I'm glad a lot of you guys have been rolling with us. What are what's some of your favorite films in the year? One of my favorite films for the year, I will say, Joy Luck Club. Joy Luck Club's our we first one. We started with that and then uh, Network. Network was pretty amazing. Uh, all, all the, the President's Men! President's Man, which I also love that film. We're All the President's it. Man, and I do love. Well, the High Fidelity. You she know that. She didn't love High Fidelity. <laughs> you know that. Hey, you, you know, know what? That's what my least favorite film of the year. It's you know, like a, damn, least? Least. I like High least. Fidelity. Compared to all the movies we watch. Anyway, it looks like... I mean, it's honest opinion. People don't like disagree. Or it's, some of them we live in Los Angeles, and so we're at the epicenter right now of COVID. So it looks like we're going to be in lockdown for a little longer. So oh I'm sure God. in 2021 we'll continue with Movie Club. But this week, we ended it with a... a, a, a oh, yeah, cheers. 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 White Claw. White Claw time, you guys. The end of the year. Cheers, cheers. to you guys. Cheers to you. Cheers, happy holidays, happy holidays, and happy new year. And so we're going to uh, talk about Hook because it's a, it's a Christmas movie. Yeah. I mean, I'm in it, or my 15-year-old ass was in it. So it's kind of fun <laughs> to rewatch it this week. So young, Dante. So young. So young. But you the were movie, a kid. I was a kid. And we'll get to, like, whatever, me and the movie. But just the movie itself as a movie, I know... Yeah. You know, I know a lot about movies. I was in the movie, and I know it wasn't uh, one of you know Steven Spielberg's favorite films of his career. Just oh from, really? It wasn't. I heard the opposite thing. No, it, it, it's something that just wasn't. I think one of the best things he 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 enjoyed in all of his. I mean, he has an illustrious career, yeah. but it became this cult classic as the years have gone by. It's been almost, I think thirty years next year, mm -hmm. and when I went back and watched it this time, mm -hmm. uh, I really maybe because I'm older and you just kind of like really fall in love with the story, story. of the grown up Peter Pan and. Being a father and family and 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 rekindling Deeply. rekindling like the, the the kid and the mm -hmm. you know for mm -hmm. me the artist inside you the the, mm -hmm. the joy of the mm -hmm. things that we do we yeah we play in Hollywood by telling stories and making movies and a lot of times you can like lose that in the hustle of the business and trying to sell these sell movies the and make the money which is important mm -hmm. but uh, this movie kind of it kind of hits you on a lot of different levels it's so sentimental absolutely. and absolutely. beautiful. Absolutely. I mean, I watched this film twice, and this is my third time watching it. And then, um, it's interesting, a few days ago, I met one of my um, uncle. It's a Paraka, if you 
watching it's shout out to you <laughs> he's he said um i mean he's a really successful business entrepreneur and then uh he's one of the restaurant owner of all the waivers now in the outside of the state or inside the state of everywhere all around the world it's a called arambak restaurant so he said um never grow up he said that to you? He said, like, when, when, when we had... Yeah, you're like, a hook fan. We don't know. I don't know. I mean, he said, I mean, I was I was asking advice. I'm like, um, business um, advice. Like, you don't need, like, older uncle. Like, you have to ask advice, whatever. So, when I'm asking that, he said, forget, like, remember, you want to hustle. You want to make it, things happen. But never grow up. Don't forget to have fun. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your... Uh, happiness never grow up don't feel like you have to grow up and ironically we got to watch i mean this is two different things like it's the response of course you're gonna take a responsibility yeah that's two different things responsibilities and then being a grow up grow growing up is a two different things so a lot of people like and then interesting we watched this film and it means a lot like you understood more because how does peter pan goes back to reality and then just become a dad and then he forgot. He fell in love. He fell in love and he become a dad and he become like hustler of his life. He tried to make it best to his career, whatever. And he doesn't trust the fairy tale. He doesn't imagine. He doesn't enjoy his life. Right. Mostly. And he living in this stressful uh, life and he forgot about the enjoying. So that's why he's like that super magical, beautiful, colorful thing right. disappears from his life. It's interesting. So it's meaning a lot. And yeah. I love the movie. Not because of... You're in that movie. No, I love the movie. I mean, like, I, the movie's great. When I look at it now, I, I enjoy the filmmaking. I mean, things that I talked to Steven as a kid on the set and him talking about making the camera move and being, uh -huh. this is, you know, this is motion pictures, have the camera moving all the time and, he, and the motion that he put into the film always uh -huh. and the beauty of how he shot it and just seeing Neverland and the magic... You know, some, I grew up on those sets, so when people talk to me about the magic, and then, you know, mm -hmm. to me, it's my memories is the set, and mm -hmm. to watch it now and not think of it as a set, but think of it as a world, mm -hmm. was really fascinating. And for actors or filmmakers that mm -hmm. go back to their old films, it's really like looking through an old mm -hmm. picture book. Yeah, you know? that's true. And so, all my old friends from like, all my Lost Boys, shout out to mm -hmm. Jimmy Matteo and Tommy Tulak and Elijah and, uh, uh, you know, everybody in the film, there's so many guys I miss out there. Mm -hmm. Rashawn, Thudbutt, you know. Um, Lost as, Boys kids. Yes, as well as, uh, you know, as well as Steven and, and Robin, rest in peace, Robin Williams. Uh, rest in peace, Bob Hoskins, uh, Maggie Smith. I mean, the, the days I would show up on set and just watch is just amazing, amazing to see it. Uh, in, he has left over a long time. I'm sorry. Huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn, Alice. Never grow up. Never grow up. <laughs> food scene. The food scene was food to, scene. to watch how he put it all together and how it was because in my mind we shot different time to watch it. What a great scene. That's my great. favorite scene. Yeah. That is my favorite scene. I was like not in the good mood last night uh, watching that film. But that scene make me made me happy for some reason. Like it's so like it's meaningful at the same time. It's so like you have to force yourself like think the happy things. The happy, it's called a happy happiness, thought, a thought, happy thought. Happy thought. Yes. So in your head, like, I, I literally force myself what makes me happy, what makes me laugh. And then watching that during, like, while you're thinking that thoughts and you're watching the film, it's like, literally, it makes me joy. And then I know that character, how that feel. And it's really interesting and then there's a, an aggressive man a kid aggressive man captain aggressive Hook? kid fighting with that uh, me? peter pan so your character what were you guys fighting for you know we're fighting uh to just kind of stay kids and, and fight grown-ups and fight you know the evil of captain the Hook. way you pronounce each word like when you're doing the food fight like when you do like can you say that again which one the the i don't know these you can't ask me lines right now. I don't know these lines. <laughs> We're going to bring people in. We're also... I can answer questions. If you guys want to throw questions in the chat, we can definitely... Yes, do it. Uh, and we do have some VIP guests, and we're going to bring some people in so we can further talk about everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, and there's questions coming in. Look at it. Um, from Glamorous Refrigerator. Should I be ashamed? This is my first time watching it. 
You're no, like, don't like, be ashamed. No, the first time yeah. we welcome you. So it's all good. We just been watching movies. Glamorous refrigerator, and if you love movies, you can come and watch. You can exactly book a VIP spot mm -hmm. and just talk about the film. Yeah, there's race. no judgment. No. If you watch it, watch it. If you don't like it. Don't feel pressured just because of Dante sitting here and you don't like the film, you just like being, you no, know? No, but he was just saying it's the first time watching. I know, I'm saying, like, cinema. even though if you didn't watch it and then... Even but it's his first time watching Cinema Club. Oh, Cinema Club? Yeah. No, don't feel shame. Why do you feel shame? See, it's good. We Welcome to here. the club. I mean, I Brethel, hope you like it. Brethel BG says, what are you, you going to eat for Christmas? Imaginary food? Imaginary food. No, what do you eat for Christmas? We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. It's gonna be a smaller I Christmas this year. I mean, it's not year. my cultural. Uh, I mean, culturally, I'm a Muslim, but we don't really celebrate Christmas. But now you're here as in America. New year. Now I'm here in America with my American friends. Whatever they feed me, I'll eat that. Except pork. I don't except eat pork. pork. She doesn't yeah. eat pork. But we're probably gonna eat, uh, you know, turkey Imaginary food. and things like that. I. There's more questions coming in. Turkey again? Yeah, turkey. We eat turkey for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. Why? Because that's what we do. Why do we eat turkey in the Christmas? That's what we do. Keon's let her know that's what we do. Um, let's see. Here's another question from How Mary does it feel with the Robin Wolves? How, this is a question I get all the time at Comic-Cons and just around. Or even just at meeting people who find out who I am just in the streets. And one of the biggest questions is, how was it like to work with Robin Williams? And... And I actually love that question because Robin Williams is such a special, special person. Um, and to put it short, like I always tell people that, yeah. you know, Robin Williams played the genie in Aladdin. And that's who Robin Williams was. He was, a, he was the genie. He, he knew everybody's names all the time. He, he kept the morale, the setup for so many hours, for so many months. And he was just a wizard of his mind just to sit there and watch his mind work and his improv and his acting and his wit. Um, and when he was around, like the genie, like mm. actual magic things can happen and often do. So, I mean, I love Robin Williams. He was such a great mentor to me. And I was a big fan of him from Mork and Mindy beyond. I grew up with Mork and Mindy. And then Dead Poets Society was a big film of mine. And so me and him spent so much time talking about poetry. And, oh, you uh, like poetry. Yeah, yeah. He likes poetry. Li yeah. Dead, I mean, he. Did you watch Dead Poets Society? It's Your be, Society? No, it's a movie called Dead Poets Society. That's his film? Yeah. Next year. That's going to be on the list next year for, for Cinema Club for sure. Year. So thank you for the question and shout out. Rest in peace, Robin Williams. Um, yes? And then... <laughs> what? You have more things to say about the movie? No. I just uh, I just type um, famous um, quote for this film. And then Rufio said, you are a fart factory. Yes, fart factory for sure. <laughs> yeah, shout out to uh, Radio ATN in I Germany. Um Mary Mary 06 loves Dead, Dead Post Society. It'll be on the list for next year's Cinema Club. Yeah, next year's Cinema Club, we're going to do um calendar and we're going to list it all the films for f for at least a few months. Few months. And there'll be like at least you guys can vote on a, f a film every month. And we're trying to figure it out every, as we go. Yeah, as we go. And then I want I I love people voting their films. Yeah, so once a month we'll still have a vote and yes. we'll still have other films that we'll be bringing just films that either, either films that we'll both watch for the first time or something you'll see for the first time or something else see for the first time yeah and you'll bring some maybe some films from asia that we that i've never seen exactly i love to bring that um foreign films like uh turkish film chinese film uh, russian film i don't know like german film right for like we will like i mean it's a cinema club we want to do more 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 cinema more cinemas I'm so, this whole thing so you get, get the people ready that you we're going to come in for the... Yeah, we have a two VIP guests. So the, explain to people how this VIP list works. Well, VIP list, because I receive a lot of DMs, so here's the VIP list works. So uh, while um, streaming, we're going to announce the film for next week. And then um, during this whole week or weekend, you can watch the film um, and then DM me. Uh, go to my Instagram account, uh, send me a little message. So you watch the film, not you watch the film 20 years ago or 10 years have something ago. To say. Have something good to say. <laughs> have something good to say or have something bad to say. You don't like it or whatever. So, um, uh, wait, what is and your then, if, if they DM you. If they DM me, and then we can put I'm you on gonna, the list and guarantee to and then we're gonna put the put your put your on the list, and we're gonna guarantee you will be in the our live all our, our live. So, so here's another question from uh, Hus Mc Mc Hus Hasam Kader. 
Yeah. It says, what is your background, Alice? What is your what background? What is my background? I'm Oigar. Right now, her background is the movie Hook. So, right <laughs> what is my background? This movie Hook. But um, I'm pretty sure he's asking where I'm from. I know. I'm just teasing. And you. then, yeah, nice joke. Um, I'm from Oig uh, I'm from China, and it's uh, one of the autonomous region called autonomous region called uh, Xinjiang. Oigar land. I call it Oigar land. <laughs> you call Oigar land? <laughs> Neverland, Oigar land. Um, so there's a, a minority people lives there. It's called Uyghur. So I'm one of the minority. And Uyghur. then I'm, 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 I'm Uyghur. Exactly. <laughs> we'll do a few more questions before we bring the people in. Um, ready and let's see another, I saw another question, question about, mm -hmm. um, favorite parts of the, oh, favorite part, I mean, favorite part of last airbender, I, we just finished book three and I love the end of book three. So okay. comment. Okay. Uh, I haven't watched it. She hasn't watched it yet. She's gonna. She's I haven't gonna... watched Avatar yet, so people is gonna hate me. Whatever. No, she's gonna watch it during this whole holiday season. What was the hair for Rufio? Was it hair for Rufio your real hair, or was it a wig? It was my the black hair was all my real hair. Really? Yeah. That was your real hair. But the red hair. What about the red ones? The red were inserts in my hair, uh, and for people out like there extended? cosplaying, like extensions, but they're like extensions. Right. If. If anyone's trying to really cosplay Rufio and get like, bam, get that real, real red skunk head look, that was actually, I asked him what it was, it's three it was inserts, like... a tri we called it the trihawk, the three mohawks, right? And so that was actually dyed um, antelope tail. If you can get your hands on any antelope tail and dye it dye fire it. red, then you can have a true Rufio trihawk. Did we talk about the favorite scene yet? Yeah, give what it to me. I'm, 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 I'm. My favorite scene. I mean, uh, here's a few things I don't really love about this oh film. Oh my god, I go for it. Go for I mean, I love. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> this is uh, speaking of that question from SDC five eight seven. Oh, what is your What's favorite, your favorite scene, scene from, from the Hulk? Hulk? My favorite scene from the Hulk. It's absolutely food fight. And can I see one, one um, more than one? Yeah. That's number one. Number two, um, it's one the first time we see it in uh, Neverland. Yeah, and that's great. That's the amazing. Okay, what's your, what's your opposite of the favorite scene? scene? What's your not favorite scene? My non favorite scene is the beginning of the film. It's a little slow. slow. Yeah. You should go to Neverland, like, boom, faster. I always thought that when I was younger, but at now watching it again, I appreciate all that early stuff. Why? I don't because know. Because it sets, sets up why he became. Yeah, it sets it up. Maybe. Who he is, yeah. why he's. Um, father and son. Charlie Corsmo was great. I mean, he was great playing the son work. and his relationship with his son and on the plane. And I just, love it. He was great. And Maggie, I mean, you get to see Maggie Smith. And you know, Maggie Smith was wearing older makeup and she seems looked super old as Grandma Wendy there. And then you watch her in Harry Potter like decades later. Like, how did she get younger? Like, what's going on? That's just, and I, and I have to remind myself, oh, she was wearing makeup. I mean, this is, I'm saying, like, I'm looking at the outsider perspective. I watched the film twice. I'm third. I mean, you're in the film. I know. I've lived so, with it for a long time. Exactly. So that's my least favorite scene. Like in the beginning, it's a little slow. Well, okay. Should we go on? What to... about yours? What? My favorite scene. Your favorite scene? scene and least favorite scene. What do you mean what? My favorite scenes. I mean, there's so many. It pops out. I've seen this film tons of times over the years. Not. I, mean, I haven't seen it in years, and I started watching it again uh, during anniversaries, during like 25th anniversary. So I've been watching it over the last few years a bunch of times. I mean, different things pop out to me that are, are wonderful. I love watching Dustin Hoffman play Captain Hook and all the things he did. Mm -hmm. um, just the character he put. And then Robin Williams, doing, seeing Robin Williams discover everything is great. But one of my all-time favorite moments in the film, and still it was at this time too, is when Little Pockets sees Peter Pan for the first time. He's oh, like, there yeah, you, there, you there you are, Peter. And it's Peter. so epic, the way the camera's moving and the I light. Know. And it's like, it looks like a sunset and all the guys are behind me. But then this one lost boy pocket sees Peter Pan. It's like deep within his eyes. And it's just, he and the music of John Williams, like the music is just like so epic. Great epic. It's just like an epic, music. epic moment. And when he's like slowly touching um, the Peter Pan's face, like, and then just like, Tried to push his yeah. <laughs> brain. You know what's crazy? That's as, so sweet. Like, I think a lot of you guys out there love movies. Like, we love movies. I love movies. And you watch movies and you love, like, these epic movies. And you're watching, you know, Star Wars Rogue when mm -hmm. we saw. Or, like, you watch Harry Potter. You watch Hook. You watch these things. And you watch the epicness of these moments. And they, they feel yeah. that. Like, yeah. big Hollywood epic moments. Mm -hmm. And then it's a trip to go, damn, I was in that. 
Like it's weird to like, you know, I can watch it as a, as a fan now and as an audience member and you're watching and you kind of trips out like, damn, I was in one of those crazy movies. That's yeah, all. you're one of those lucky men. One of those lucky dudes. Lucky um, dudes. But let's hey, look. Let's get some more people in here. We're gonna continue to talk about the movie and talk okay. about our favorite scenes and moments okay. as we go through. Let's start right. first. The favorite. way it works with VIPs is we get the first VIP at the stop and then the, the second VIP to close it out. Okay. And in between, we just bring people in. So so first VIP is our old friend Cat Three. Is she? Hello. Where is she at? That's her full name, right, Cat Three? But it's Cat. Call her Cat. We call her Cat. Cat. Where's she at? Cat, how, what's her? What's Cat, her? did you? Oh, no, odd, face, odd face, odd face, odd face. I just put, I, just put I, I put the wrong thing in. You put the S. That's, that's not A. I'm sorry. This is when people, we look crazy in, here it uh, is. in the, and in the, the so here we go. Our first VIP, VIP yes. yes. Ooh! Yeah! Oh! What's up, oh! Cat? I met Kat for the first time virtually. We were doing a, a Rufio cosplay, right? Um, I made a makeup tutorial on YouTube 10 years tutorial. ago. That's the first time I met you. Yeah. I met you or I somehow commented or some we had like an interaction about it, right? Yes. Yeah, I went to like your spoken word in San Francisco. And another I can't believe that was 10 years ago. Don't tell me that was 10 years ago, Kat. It was. Damn. <laughs> Ten years. Here ago. we are. We look like here we are. We're all we're all in there the mode. We're all in the we're all in the hook. We're on the hook. Rufio, bangerang, bangerang mood Rufio. here. How are you, Cat? It's been a long time. I'm no good. Sleep. I love your T-shirt, Alice. Oh I just posted God. that photo too. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's not mine, but I borrowed it. She from. stole it. <laughs> she stole it's it. mine now. <laughs> and Dante, is yours a map? Okay. No, mine's a. a this oh. is a, a 1991 hook. Uh, just a vintage T-shirt that the the writer and executive producer uh, JV Hart gave me as we reconnected. He's like, I got something for you. I was like, Oh my god, it's an old ass T-shirt. I'll take oh, it. Yes, so great. So, Kat, we miss we missed your miss your movie you. breakdowns. So break it down break for us. I was time. for us. I was yeah. nervous, so you know I can get like super analytical with as you should. Don't don't as worry. You this movie's so old. It's not even. I'm not. I'm not even emotionally connected to it like that. Are you? Yeah. Now, no. are you saying my least favorite scene the way you just look at me like I'm crazy person? What's your favorite scene when Rubio dies? You got stabbed. You're like, that's all I love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rude. Rude. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, well, when I started watching it, you know, I took out my laptop and I was like, I'm going to take notes. But a part of me just wanted, you know, I grew up on this film. I'm a 90s baby. And all a right. part of me just wanted to like play, you know? And another part of me is like, if I overanalyze this movie, have I grown up? Did I fail? You know, like yeah, did I, I lose? No. My, Are you supposed to analyze it? I feel you on that, but no, please overanalyze a little bit. With That's us. what we do. Well, I mean, I started as an adult. It's really interesting if you rewatch it, and there's been some time from seeing it as a kid. Like as a kid, I think most kids would remember, you know, the fight scenes, Rufio, you know, the hook. And so rewatching it as an adult, at the beginning of the movie, I was like. I don't remember any of this, like Robin Williams, rest in peace, like yelling and being like an angry father in the airplane. I, 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 like I completely didn't see that. And so as an adult, I was watching it and also starting to see all the holes, like things that don't make sense right. about the film. And yeah. a part of me was like, should I analyze it or am I being a grown up? And thinking you can analyze it. We can yeah. I think that was a, the part of the movie that people like, when it came out, that's just the holes in the film or like things that weren't as tight as they expected a Spielberg expected film to be. Yeah. yeah. But the magic of Spielberg was throughout the film still, you know? Maybe Steven Spielberg yeah. tried to say, don't overanalyze. You're being growing up. You're I don't know. Let's out. call him up and ask him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of sad because I don't know how Steven Spielberg felt when the movie came out. But I read a lot of reviews from, like, critics from the 90s. And then watched an interview of Steven Spielberg saying later, like, he has a lot of regrets about the film. And I'm like, I wonder if the critics got to his head. They or might have. I think they probably did. I think he didn't. Yeah, I, I've always had that feeling about the movie with him, also. And I, and I hear from other friends that are connected to him that said he's so surprised and loves that it's become this cult classic that it's become, which is crazy, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um. Let's see. What else? What can I say that's different and intelligent? Anything, cat. Something. Anything. Anything. Um. Well, let's see. You know what? I didn't real. So I. Remember the pirate that doubts Captain Hook at the beginning, and they're like, yes. "Someone, Captain Hook is like, someone doubts me." The boom I box. didn't realize that's Glenn Close. That's Glenn Close. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. 
No. The guy, she was playing a guy. She's a woman, Glenn Close from Fatal Attraction and so many other Which things. Which one? The one that got thrown in the boo box for doubting Captain Hook could bring Peter Pan back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's Glenn Close. That's yeah. Some... Oh, yeah, Lord, like, I there's didn't... so many cameos that I, as a kid, obviously, I didn't. I remember being like... on... On the set that day, well, I was in the makeup trailer. But you told me your brother was like one of my little shows. brother was yeah. My little brother Dean was in the movie too. He was like a slave boy that was went with Maggie when they got, but then that part got cut out of the movie. But with with Glenn Close, I was in the makeup trailer while they were getting her ready, and I was like, you know, I'm this kid, and I'm 15, and I, I love Glenn Close. Also, excuse me, drinking alcohol, but Whoa. also um. Because I love Fatal Attraction. And for you guys have not seen Fatal Attraction, we watched Basic Instinct on this. Yes, you did. Fatal Attraction was like before Basic Instinct. It was like this other toxic, crazy love affair, sexy, sexy Michael Douglas film. And um, and I was a big fan. I remember telling her, like, I, I loved you in Fatal Attraction. Yeah. Well, you're a kid. Yeah, she's looking did at you me. Say and like, that? like, you watched Fatal Attraction? I was like, yeah, I loved you, yeah, I loved you in Fatal Attraction. <laughs> Oh and God. she was like kind of laughing, like, damn, this kid's talking some big so time. Yeah, movie. you're not allowed in that movie. I'm like, I know, but I was into it. I was into it's it. All right, then. Why are you watching that? And I was like, Glenn, I was into it. It's close. I was into it. You're the last boy. You're wild. <laughs> we were a lot on that set. But yeah, that, there's so many different things. David Crosby from Crosby, Stills, and Nash was in the film. I mean, Quincy Jones, I don't know if he made the film, but he was had a, had a cameo in the film. Gwyneth Paltrow, young Gwyneth Paltrow played young, young Wendy. Wendy. And obviously, she wasn't Gwyneth Paltrow back then. She was just a girl on the set, and she was in our school room, and she was cute. And we're like, who's that? And they're like, that's Steven's goddaughter. I'm like, what's up, Steven's goddaughter? Holler. What's up? What's um, up? And there's so many people. And not only the people that were made cameos in the movie, but everyone who stopped by the set. Like, literally, it was crazy. I have actually have a, I have a, I have the, I have the sign-in book somewhere, but they gave us all the copy of all the people that came from, like, Literally, from people like Bruce Willis and like you know George Lucas. Wait, George Lucas yeah. and Carrie Fisher were the couple that were kissing when when they go to when he goes to Neverland. They sprinkle the spare dust on the couple that rises as Peter Pan is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was, that. that was George Lucas and Carrie Fisher kissing under the, the lamppost. Seriously, I, I mean, I need yeah. I need to remind myself like actors are people. They have friends, and I can imagine them being like, "Yo, you want to make a cameo in my movie?" Yeah, like, we're a Peter Pan, you know, movie. or just Peter everyone's like. Peter Pan goes beyond like any kind of uh, you know IP or like franchise like Harry it's Potter absolutely. or Star Wars. P Peter Pan's a fairy tale that we're all fans of. That's been around longer. That's a, that's one of the crazy things I talk about when I talk about Hook and people talk about Rufy. I go, this is the deal. Peter Pan and Neverland is a, a fairy tale. It be go it's like beyond all the IPs that we're in love with now. It's literally been a long. Longer, I've been around longer than any of us on mean. planet Earth has been alive. It's going to be around longer than any of us are here, going to be here still, right? It's going to be on forever. And the crazy thing is, out of this crazy fairy tale of Peter Pan and Lost Boys and Captain Hook, all of a sudden, through the movie Hook, like this little Filipino kid that enters this whole domain and he's Rufio, and forever, like a, a little Filipino kid, a person of color, is part of this fairy tale and I, that's one of the magical things of like hollywood and, and storytelling you know and representation yeah. that's, that's when people talk about representation I'm like that's representation that just happened you it's know true. like literal like yes Nothing. um what else as an adult watching it i it really noticed like it's really sad how brokenhearted like tinkerbell and grandma wendy are i'm like this is such a weird dynamic yeah. you know to watch the boy you fell in love with, fall in love with your grand, not your daughter, your granddaughter. Your granddaughter. <laughs> your there granddaughter. is some like weird, like, yeah. We had a weird relationship. I wasn't about to mention that too. too. What, and even when, even, when, even when Tinkerbell, like she wants to kiss Peter, Peter, and like he even says something, this is like that weird sexual, like Oedipus something. I've, he said some like weird improv lines where you're like, I don't know if this is a piece of my imagination. Like you're real beautiful. And I'm, I don't know what I'm supposed to be thinking right now. <laughs> yeah. And like he's, he seemed like kind of, his character seemed really dismissive, like Tinkerbell just used like the utmost magic to be like large for a few minutes and he's like not really paying attention to her, yeah. you know, in that scene where Julia Roberts becomes big and I'm yeah, like, he was oh, in yeah. that. He was still, he, 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 he I think he resorted or, or came back to his like boy, boyish Peter Pan. Yeah. Play thing. Yeah. Pan. And then she woke him up again. Like, why are you actually here? He's like, oh yeah. I got kids. Yeah, he would not have gotten far without Tinkerbell. And that moment also, like, it made me realize there's, like, an amnesia effect, not just in the real world, but also 
in Neverland because oh, yeah. Peter Pan himself yeah. like forgets why he's even there. The whole thing is really movie. yeah. Same thing with Young Jack. I think one of the magic. I've talked to the writers because we're, we're we're working on a Neverland project. Me and some, the writers of Hook right now. And one of the big things that they 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 touch on in Hook and they touch on books is that when you're in Neverland, you forget. That's you why forget you, about where you. You forget about where you're from. You forget about your parents, and 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 that's part of. Uh, that's one of the things like Rufio dying and remembering his dad at the end is like, and like even like Thud, but remembering his mom. Like that's the one thing I, you know, because you forget because you're too caught up yeah. in the fun and games and adventures of Neverland adventures that you forget about that, like, what was going on in the real world yeah. that you left, you know? Yeah. It does seem like it's a thought that like it, when Rufio's dying, like that he never talked about his like dad. I mean, maybe he never got the chance. Right. But in his dying moment, he's like, like I, I wish I remember had, I don't have a yeah, father. No, yeah, yeah, and I also, wish I had like you. Also, just young Julia Roberts. I mean, I think sometimes people forget about Julia Roberts being in the movie because, I don't know, because so heavy because down I'm... with, like, uh, with Robin Williams and Hoffman. But to see a young Julia Roberts, because we all know Julia Roberts has been, she's had an illustrious career, and she's just, like, now she's, like, an mm -hmm. elder statesman actress who's powerful and wonderful and amazing. But to see her as a young ingenue, playing Tinkerbell. She's just so young and beautiful. I was so curious about how they shot that scene. Like when that, like back and forth, when the, um, Peter Pan tried to like get into her house. Like small time. No, I remember it exactly because I was how watching they it. Do it. They had a big, um, well, they, she, she had a whole blue screen. Uh, blue screen, yeah. That's, that's exactly. I figured she had a out. had blue screen, right? And then for that particular, because I remember going to the set, they had like a, they made a big dollhouse, like a life-size dollhouse with life-size, like, six-foot six Barbies. Six-foot Barbies. And it was like, oh, like, this is super weird. And we were, like, walking around the little dollhouse and saw the stunt lady tumble down the stairs and stuff like that. So I totally... That's the other thing about watching the movie. I'm just, like, having all these memories of, like, hanging out on, on the, the set and seeing all the sets and seeing all the pirates and hanging out and talking junk with all the pirates. What were you doing around. in that set? I was doing stuff. I was doing things. I was doing things. We were Lost Boys. We were... We used to still Lost Boys. I was talking to the... Steven Spielberg's goddaughter? Well, she was only on for a few days. We were talking to the mermaids <laughs> when they were around. We were, we were lost, but we were trying to get in trouble. We did steal a lot of golf carts on the Sony <laughs> I bet you Just did. driving around a lot. Like, you guys can't do this. Like, we're lost boys. We can't, we can't get in trouble. Like, literal, <laughs> literal lost boys. And teenagers, you know, like, I saw an interview you did. You're like, I was 15. Like, I just want to be cool. You know? <laughs> like, I just want to be cool. Sometimes we, like... Why are we not, why are we in the older, like when you're in the get, getting in a certain age, you just give yourself a limit. Like, I can't do this, I'm too old, or I'm too... You're too old, Alex, mm. too old. Huh? Yeah, that's you're actually too. a thought I had. Like, I know, like, Alex, you said something really good earlier, but, and I'm going to paraphrase it weird, but you said there's a difference between, like, growing up and also, like, being responsible. Like, you can become responsible and yeah. still play and i think what happens yeah. for a lot of us we stop playing like there's no recess for adults like we don't yeah. have playtime. in fact it's considered weird and i feel yeah. like that's so important to have recess to have time to play okay. for exactly adults, absolutely you know? absolutely like adults is adult like at the same time you can't be a crazy like a kid right you can't be like you can't be like crazy adult. You can be whatever you want to be, but you don't limit yourself and enable yourself in the one certain box. I mean, of course you're gonna have the responsibilities, but doesn't mean you have to be a certain way. Also, you know I, mean? I mean, we're the fortunate ones, us being filmmakers, and you too as being a filmmaker, a content exactly. creator, and a makeup artist. That play is our job. Yes. Yes. Is our yeah. job. Well, play she's not playing, she's working. I mean, it's work. Work is play. She's, play is work. She's creating play. Play is work. She's creating tangible things. I know, but she's having when fun she create, with it. Can you create that thing? That's why I think girls take so long doing their damn makeup because they're just having so much fun playing Ooh. with their faces. <laughs> painting on their faces. That's art. That's a piece of art. Oh my God. I'm going to yell at I don't this know if Sorry, guys. Time I'm, for that. That. I'm just saying, y'all playing with your faces on the bathroom for too damn long. We got to go to the place. This to get is a piece of art. We're gonna be like, I mean, everyone. I mean, there is, there is a term said. There's no uh, ugly girls. There's just only lazy girl. Damn. Do you agree with that? Like, are we having a makeup talk now? Yeah, that's how. Can we do that on the beauty channel? Where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What What else want uh, to go say, Kathy, before we, we roll? Um, what can I say? You know. I really can appreciate older films before there was like a lot of CGI. I love CGI. It's amazing. Yes. What, yes. what we can see like Jurassic World compared to Jurassic Park, but both to me are like really good. And I love that in Hook, it's just like a lot of practical effects. Like I know 
like the set was built, you know, well, there was some, you know, like the wide, wide island shots are not real, but the set and like the yeah. lighting, when like uh, something so magical is happening. I mean, I'll like, tell you, that's one of the things I was feeling too when I was watching, because to look at the world and I, I remember the sets, I remember all those sets. It's like a time that's passed. They don't build the sets like that anymore to that extent. extent. And when they do the big scene and you see the pirate ship and the, and the bridge going to the pirate ship, that's all real. It's like... Yeah walking on that set seeing a real these guys built a friggin pirate ship a full pirate ship in water it was in water yeah and we were like what is go it was like working at disneyland like we were at disneyland yeah. except for it does look a lot like the disneyland it's ship that passes on like Fan phantasmic if you've seen the show yeah. disneyland, or the ride pirates of the caribbean right. like it pirates really feels like theatrical and I know I've read some critics reviews that are like the set wasn't believable blah 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 but to me I'm like it looks like kids play in a, like a really yeah. well done like whimsical way like what kids would imagine and like play out so to me it like really worked I'm biased because totally. I want I want to like the film but I think but Neverland is, a, is, is built out of imagination yeah I think Neverland and was so, built out of imagination so it doesn't really it, you know necessarily have to have to be exactly to the real world because it's it's like the kids imagining their food they yeah the world was created out of imagination That's like, imagine yeah it was kids. like the like the color scheme of the world like you know like the food that they were eating it was like being like a kindergarten playroom or something and i saw some reviews that are like it doesn't look like a real island and blah 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 and i'm like it's like just play you know like be playful yeah. it's there's no movie that like to me, like, looks like that. Like, I feel like they it established a really distinct style, but that's just me. <laughs> well, Kat, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for joining us for this whole adventure of this I whole know. year. From and we look forward to talking to you more then... next year. Happy holidays. Thank you so happy much. Holidays. You know, happy holidays. You already know how I feel about you creating this show and just having giving us all something to look forward to. So thank you. Aww, Enjoy the rest of the Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, Kat. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. I know. She started with the first uh, episode. And, and then now she's, she can close it out with us. Of so course. you guys out there, we have some time for people to come in. Hashtag Neverland. Hashtag Neverland will bring you in and you can talk about the movie with us. And uh, we Hashtag can, Neverland. I guess Neverland, why not? Hashtag. Hashtag Rufio. Uh, hashtag Hook. Hashtag Neverland. Uh, yeah. I just said Neverland, so let's just roll with Neverland. Okay, it's kind of long. It's kind of long. Long word. Never, man. I have to type them now. There it is. We're here. The first person I saw hashtag now that we're bringing okay, in. Okay, let's do it then. We're going live with Lee's art. Look at my Hopefully. cute uh, Sienna. Oh! Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. What's up? What's, What's your name? Up? Um, I forgot my name. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, my name is actually um, Lisa. I am such a huge fan. If I'm screaming, I'm sorry. Um, oh, my God. Nice to meet you. Nice. Where are you calling from? I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Oh, Whoa. shout out to Brooklyn. BK, you freezing out there? Is it snowing? You all right? Man. <laughs> it's only December. <laughs> Usually, we don't get, we really don't get hit with snow until, like, January, February. But, uh, you know, 2020. You know what? At least we're going to have a white Christmas. That's exactly. beautiful. White, white Christmas. Christmas. We have Christmas. Yes. We have a Christmas. She made a little Santa Claus. I made a little you know, Santa Claus. We're doing good. I love that. <laughs> I have to say, Dante, yes. Hook is, was one of the first movies I could call my favorites. And um, mm -hmm. it's something that I knew I was going to, as a kid watching that movie, for me, it was the first time I realized, oh man, one day I'm gonna grow up. And it was kind of like this sad thing, but also it made me appreciate it all the more. And maybe I was a little mischievous because of it. <laughs> um, I was like, oh, as you should be. As you should be. Lost boys and girls forever, you know? Yes. Um, I have, I, I actually have the shirt that Alice is borrowing. <laughs> yeah, and I have the, the green one that says, you are the man. How soft is this shirt? Up? It it's is like my, so soft, yeah. right? Yes, no, I love it. It's so comfortable. Now. It's so great. So I love it. what, what are your favorite moments in Hook? Okay, so for me, my favorite moments as an adult um, yeah. is seeing Robin Williams' character, well, Peter Pan, um, just being so terrified of flying because I am terrified as well. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, wow. but Peter as a kid, yeah, yeah. But as a kid, 
It was definitely your intro, like the way you kind of just your means of transportation, which are terrifying <laughs> to see, just kind of like rolling in. That was amazing. That was really amazing. I love in the movie when he's on the plane and Maggie's like, he's like, what are these pictures? Like, that's you. That's that's mommy. That's Jack. That's me. That's you. He's like, why don't why don't I got a parachute? Why don't I got a parachute, Jack? What the hell is going on? Here? <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, it, and you know, then. Oh my god, I just can't believe I'm talking to you. I'm sorry. I'm like totally fangirling right now. Oh, um, then when Avatar came out, you know, 10 years ago, I watched it and I absolutely loved it. And I told all my friends about it. And they were like, bro, you're 20 something. Like, what are you doing? And I was like, all right, everyone's gonna sleep on it. Fine. And then when Netflix picked it up and put it out Killed there. It. Yeah. And I love like you gotta know like, about this show now. Yes. And now I'm like, I told you so. But I let my kids watch it, and it's funny because- You got kids? How many kids you got? I, I have two you boys. Know, something. You look like a baby you, still. You like no, a baby. no. <laughs> never grow up. Um, never, never grow, grow up. up. <laughs> that, I never will. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I totally, um, I have to say that, you know, I made them watch, I didn't make them, I had Avatar on, and even when you made that little cameo as, um, in, in oh, Legend of Korra, yeah, I was like, oh, that voice. So it's funny because then I, me and the kids, you know, we watched Hook and they were like, that kid sounds familiar. What other movie is he in? And I was like, that's Fire Lord Zuko. And they were like, <laughs> mind blown. Yeah. It is Fire Lord. And they're, they're, the characters are very similar. There's like a very redemptive arc for both characters. So Really? Yeah, it's a little uh, Easter egg. It's a little, what they call well, those eggs? Easter eggs for people? Easter eggs, you know? yeah. Yeah, Easter eggs for people out in, in the cinema world. Like, wow. People are going to hate me if I say this. Like, I'm going to say it again. I haven't watched Avatar She yet. needs to watch it, Lisa. She you needs to watch to. it. You have to. You have to. I When you said that earlier, I was like, do I write something mean in the comments? No, because I really hope they pick me. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does, she does. no, you Say gotta watch it. it. I people just sending me a lot of messages like, "Don't, how dare you have watched Avatar?" She'll watch like, it. People She'll just like so it. angry about him. I'm talking to watch Don Bosco. My husband just got here. Look, hey, how you the doing? The from Zuko and the guy who played Rufio. Oh shit! Yo, what's up? What's up? Yo, Rufio! Hey! hey. 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 Like a lost boy for sure. Happy holidays, you guys. Shout out to Brooklyn. Merry Christmas, man. Shout out to Brooklyn's Brooklyn. in the house. Brooklyn's yeah. in the house. <laughs> well, we we're just talking about the movie Hook because we do a cinema club and we we're talking about the film um because we just watched it this week. So uh, I'm glad you guys were able to join us and happy uh, holidays. Happy holidays. Thank hey. you. Thank you so much. Thank happy so holidays. Much. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you, you. Right, you too, guys. Bye. Stay safe. Damn, that was so I cool. Love it. <laughs> that is so cool. Um, Let's rock. Uh, let's go. Um, hashtag Neverland. Bring someone in. Bring some more people in. Hashtag Neverland, guys. I'm gonna bring. You want to do a qu in. you want to do a question before? Let's do a question before we bring the next person sure. in. Um, um. What is your favorite hook quote? What is your favorite hook quote, Alice? You are a fart factory. Okay, mine That's probably my is um, to live would be an awfully big adventure. Well, I mean, that's the so it would be an awfully big adventure. Okay, let me do a fancy. Let me do a fancy one. Just, just like I just said it because I just read it like five minutes yes. ago. Um, never grow up. Never. Uh, looky, 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 I got hooky. Looky, looky, I got. Hooky. I like that line till I got stabbed. Oh, that's my favorite that, scene. If you, if you watch the movie, I think you watch it too. Because I remember when I did this thing when it, we're doing the thing before I say looky, looky, I got hooky. As I did this swipe and I swiped so quick at. At Dustin Hoffman, or actually his um his stunt double, that I clipped his button on his jacket. Seriously? You see it? You can see a button. And I'm like, looky, looky, I got him because I got his ass. I got him until he got me. And then another one, one of another uh, favorite quote is, "You must make yourself remember." Oh, you must make yourself remember. remember. Yeah, that's yeah. great. You must. Make let's bring. So remember. let's go. Hashtag Neverland. I see something right here. Oh. Hashtag Neverland. Here we go. Queer Cherry Cherry Unite 2020. I Where you at? I, I don't know. I'm just I. <gasps> I don't want to. Hello. Hi. Hello. Oh my God. Hi. What's your Hi. name? What's your name? Oh my God. My name is Sam. Hey Sam. What's Hi, going Sam. down? Thank you for joining us. Happy holidays. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm. I'm talking to Prince Zuko. <laughs> hey. um. Where you calling? Where you calling him from? Now you're talking to Rufio. Rufio. Today I'm Rufio. Yes. Zuko, both, you know. Where are you calling him from, Sam? Um, Oregon. 
Oh, oh nice. Yeah. I love nice. Oregon. Portland, Eugene. Portland. Where? Yeah, Portland. <laughs> I love Portland. You like Portland? I love Portland. I've been there. Yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty nice over here. <laughs> so what's going on? Thank you for being an Avatar fan. I definitely appreciate that. Okay. Have you ever watched the movie Hook? I have. And what do you think what about What do you it? think? We're talking about Hook today on Cinema Club. We're talking about I, I Hook. Love, I love the movie. I haven't watched it in a while. but like... Yeah. What's your memories of it? Like, what's your favorite moments that you can remember in the film? I just, like, just every time Robin Williams is just, like, just, like, f feels totally out of place. Yeah. Just, like, with, you know, going back to Neverland. <laughs> He's so perfect to play a grown-up Peter Pan. It was like, just, yeah. even before we shot the film, even before I got hired to do the film, we all were re reading articles and knowing that they're doing a film about a grown-up Peter Pan and Robin Williams is playing him. And that just captured the memory. So, I mean, the, 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 the imagination of everybody in town. We're like, what? Robin Williams is going to play Peter Pan? Like, of course he is. That We all have to, like, see this film. So you when think I got, it's too perfect for them? It was great. It was amazing. Yeah. Also, Sam, what when was the moment that you realized that Prince Zuko and Rufio had the same voice? Oh my god! So I literally went to a wiki page and I was like, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute!" <laughs> <laughs> but did it make sense to you? To a, I was like, "Oh my god, yes." That's wild. Well, that's wild. I mean, he, your voice didn't change at all. It did. I was 15 back then. Now I'm way older than that. So I had to change you, Yes, you changed it in some way, the physical way. But and I mean, now I can recognize your voice like every time I hear it. It's like, really? Like, exactly. His, what, you, your, your voice didn't change, but it changed a lot. This one. Sam, <laughs> thank you for calling in from Portland. Happy holidays. Happy thank holidays. You for, thank you, Sam. And going from Neverland and honor from the Fire Nation. Thank you. Bye. 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 We got a little more time. Let's bring some more people. Let's bring like one or two people in before we do the, do we do the, the last one. The last person. I just okay. saw Neverland. Here goes one. Let's see. Let's let's bring someone else in here. Damn, go live. Alex Summers, 99. Hopefully, we'll see you. Right now. Right now. Yeah. Oh, Alex Whoa. Summers back. What's up? What's up? <laughs> how you doing today? Chilling. How you feeling? Good. How are you? Uh, I'm good, you know, I'm the E-Man, chilling like a villain, singing like Bob Dylan, keep it on the low, with some double stuff, over he goes, yeah. Ooh, what's up? <laughs> I, was, I was rocking with you there. I was just trying to beatbox, I was like, okay, <laughs> let's talk about Hook today. Oh, yeah. You're from North Carolina, South Carolina, where are you from? Um, I'm, I'm, calling, I'm calling from the Charlotte area. Oh, from the Charlotte, Charlotte, Charlotte yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew some down, one of the Carolinas on there. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you know, um... Hook is something like I walked into not knowing what to expect because I never really watched the Disney Peter Pan, and um, so I, I had my my expectations weren't that high. Right. So I, I love going into a movie and not knowing what to expect, and then walking out like, man, that was really good. You know what I mean? Right. Right. And right. I and I really really enjoyed that movie. Um, the movie resonates with me more now because I'm an adult, and I feel like in order for you to chase your dreams, you do have to kind of reach into your inner child and kind of like, you know, make amends and, and, and work with your inner child to go for your dreams. So that's what the movie, like, like the part when, when um you guys are at the table and you're like, you know, he, he flings the food and it becomes real. And then they're like, Peter's doing it. He's doing it. Yes. And that, that's like going for your dreams. Like when you actually, when you're in that space where you kind of like, you got to ignore what the out, outside world is telling you. You go for I your totally dreams. I agree. Yes. And you're doing it. And you're doing it. So I really, you're really. You're doing it, Peter. You're he, doing he's, it. He's, I love he's that. doing it without noticing it. He wasn't yes. like, really like, try to, I'm going to do it. Like when he's tried really hard, he couldn't imagine. But he right. was at that moment and he's got so that angry great. at I, having a fight with that, with that angry. I, had, I had this discussion with some of the writers recently. We were going through some story plots and we were like, that is the actual magic of the Lost Boys. Like that mm. scene. Because when you used to look at Neverland when we're, when we're creating stuff and we're like, how can these Lost Boys fight grown-up pirates with guns and swords or, you know, the the the, uh, the indigenous people of the island that were really, like the tribes with, uh, with it. Tiger Lily. How do they fight? How are they a force against the mermaids and the wolves and the gnomes in the actual book? And I said, mm. it comes from that scene in Hook. It comes from them imagining the food. Because if you look at all their weaponry and how they fight and how they create their thing, it's the 
the the power of children is the power of imagination. Yes. They're only wow. equal to adults and can overcome the adult, you know, in fights and wars and stuff because their, their, imagination. their imagination. Their imagination is their power. more powerful. They can them. create any weapons, they can create any armor, they can fight, they can sword fight, they can they can go toe to toe with Captain Hook because the, their magic is imagination. Yes. And the, you know don't have. Exactly. And you know, I was just talking about somebody I was talking to somebody else about this the other day. I think as children, we're so in tune with ourselves and our bodies, you know, like I remember when I would get a stomach ache when I was a kid and and um you know, eating too much ice cream or eating too many pizzerias. I don't know if you remember pizzerias, but they were great. But um of course. sometimes yeah, sometimes like I'll I'll get a stomach ache and even after using the bathroom, I would just rub my tummy and I'd be like, Oh, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay and I'll be just fine. I mean, I think as, as kids, you know, we're so in tune with our bodies. Like when we're running and we bump or, or we get hurt, we just rub our, our knee and keep going. You know what I mean? And um, I think that's something you should never lose as an adult, you know. Yes, you know? especially especially when you're artist. I remember you working in the um, theater, right? Yeah. Movie, uh, movie, uh, theater, yeah. yeah theater. The movie theater. Mm -hmm. Movie theater, yes. And then you tried to do your... Um, um, art, making a film, whatever. Especially us in this industry, like we're too caught up in what if this doesn't work out? What if this happened? What if, of course, being stay a, connected to yes, like the essence stay of why, why we're doing it. Essence of life, like what we yes. do. Imagination, like believing yourself, like just don't caught up in the rest of the um, um, negative or whatever the distraction you're you're trying to avoid. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's my favorite part, too. Like, when he's like, boom, and the spoon goes in. So amazing. Yeah, on that face. And I wanted to ask you, that stuff, was it whipped cream or was it shaving cream? It was it was a special, like, whipped cream, and they were making on the set all the food, including that edible, super sweet, super thick. Really? <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and, and look. How many and look. times he shot it? We shot it twice, actually, two different so times. So we had a lot of food Pat. fights. So nothing, nothing more fun than having food fights in real life is, on sets. That is so cool. And did you say Quincy Jones made an appearance in that? Yeah, he was. I don't know if he ended up making the film. He was He was going to be one. He had, like, a line or two. Because, like, Spielberg was bringing his friends in to do stuff. Uh, and I remember wow. him dressed up and everything. I don't know if he ever made it in the film. But he was, he was definitely there dressed up as a pirate. Listen, if you ever get a chance, I just stumbled across it. Uh, there's a Quincy Jones documentary on Netflix. I had no idea how deep his roots go into the oh, music, he's man. Yeah, he, I mean, as as far back as Count Basie and Sammy Davis, oh, yeah. he's incredible, man. He's you need to watch. He's that. he's a godfather of a lot of things, and it was, it was that film was produced and directed by his daughter Rashida Jones, who yes. I knew growing up, and so shout out to Rashida, and I'm also friends with his other daughter Martina, who nice so much love for it, that she watches this. She was on the stream a few uh, when we were doing. Sound of music, she was like typing in. So, shout out to Martina Jones if you're out there watching. Man. <laughs> Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Hey, happy, hey, happy holidays. holidays. Hey, and I'll uh, check your DMs, brother. Oh, uh, yeah, I want to I check you out. All, All right, right, man, cool. Bye. Thank you. Alex Have Summer. a Thank you, Alex. I see other friends in the chat. Okay, shout out to my boy great. Andrew. Andrew Sabin. Sarah Nichols, how you doing? Andrew Sabin. Hi, Sarah. Sarah's Hi, out Andrew. there. And check out. Um, uh, Spotify because my boy Andrew Sapin dropped a new song. Oh, oh really? Uh, yeah, uh, Secret called? Secret Lover. Oh, you did that. Yeah, you saw. I took a, I took a picture of it and shouted out. And also Zucchini's in the house. Shout out to Zucchini. I love that. I was like, let's have Sarah, 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 Sarah. Let's bring Sarah in. Okay. Sarah, I know. Actually, know Sarah is a big uh, Peter Pan fan. We actually met years ago at a con under the guides of like Peter Pan and then. Uh, oh, oh Sarah, hey, Sarah. Sarah. calling in from guys. Florida. Yeah. How are yeah. you doing? How are you? Good. How are you guys? Very yeah, good. You Happy look holidays. great. Thanks. I'm digging both of the shirts today. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Sarah's an old friend of mine from the East Coast, from the calm world, from just adventure. It's been eight years. So you it's were saying earlier. Long? It's been that long. She uh, she answered one of my tweets back in the day when I was roaming around Tampa area. And I don't know, I was just walking around and, you know, I was just sitting, I'm like, I'm here, does anybody want to, like, hang out? And just, she actually, she's like, you're not in a good neighbor, let me pick you up. You know, <laughs> Seriously? <dessert>. Yes. <laughs> so I've always That's how we found the kindness of others. That's and we become so friends nice. throughout the years. And I also yeah. know from back in those days, you were a big Peter Pan girl. I still am, because you were saying earlier, Alice, your favorite quote was the never grow up one. And I have that on my shoulder. So, oh, really? Yeah. 
Yeah, I have a tattoo of that on my shoulder. So oh. I was, I asked a question in there, but I wanted to ask you guys that the real story of Peter Pan's like super dark. Super like, dark. Even, he like kidnaps kids and stuff like that yeah. is the whole Questionable premise. motives going That's on. That's what I heard. Yeah, I've watched very questionable motives. And Peter Pan's not a nice person. And no. I, <laughs> I read a book recently that was really fascinating. Uh, someone uh, just uh, recommended to me called The Child Thief. Really good book. Have you read mm. it? I have not, so I'm probably. I know you're a reader. Read check that. out, check out the Child Thief. Really okay. good. Okay. Child Thief. It's about Peter. It's Pan. It's like a modern day. It's like Peter Pan today, still going on. Okay. Like wild, wild book. I'll have to read that because uh, that sounds interesting. And the question I had kind of tied into that, like the question for you guys, because we could sit and talk about the movie, and I've heard you talk about the movie multiple times, but the question I have is like, because of the dark story, of Peter Pan. What do you think could have been Rufio's back? story like how he got there like do you i just think that story would be interesting to explore. I mean, we play with it you know a lot of people that write rufio fanfics and there's mm -hmm. a lot of couple people in production houses that come to about trying to develop some new stuff for rufio i mean it can go tons of different ways but i think there's you know i think the essence of being lost boys there is a darkness there's a darkness how peter pan got there and, and trying to escape the real world he's just not the happy fun kids that are leaving to go to neverland uh, I think a lot of the lost, you know, boys are, when you think now the lost children, the lost ones, boys and girls that are going to Neverland are escaping this world because they're probably coming from a place of damage and mm -hmm. escaping to a place that's a better place for them. And in so finding these places, uh, you know, there's more adventure, more, more danger. Adventure, more danger. What, read The Child Thief. Very I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to read it and then get back to you on that. But I, I loved Hook. I mean, I grew up I mean, it's a year older than Maine to really yeah, age you, you know. That's your generation. <laughs> it is my generation. It is mine. Um, but I remember watching it as a kid and, and loving it. But I it, I was a Peter Pan fan, so I was watching it more for that. And I just never understood, like, the obsession with Rufio. Like, I I mean, I love the character, but I just never understood the obsession. Never Don't got roll it. Your... <laughs> I didn't get it. Maybe the Peter Pan just went to Chinatown and found out this Asian kid. Hey. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to steal it, it, it was a Peter Pan... <laughs> Kid for a new generation, you know, a Peter Pan. A Peter I didn't Pan kind know. Of guy. I didn't know the dark side of the Peter Pan. Story. Oh yeah, you should read. I'm, yeah, you guys surprised me. What? Um, what are your favorite moments in the uh, favorite scene or moments in the movie? Um, I really think I like when he finally figures out that he's Peter Pan, like when he's like looking at that reflection, like uh, I think Kat was saying earlier about like the CGI and stuff like that. Like I think that was still a cool moment in the scene where he's staring down at the reflection but it's yeah. a younger mm -hmm. self and I think that was so yeah, boy RJ is a good friend of mine still to this day Ryan Francis is now a director shout out to Ryan Francis out there yeah and I think that scene and then of course I love the baseball scene I think that's just oh yeah yeah that's, that's just, always, one of the things I quote most from Hook is uh just a friend is uh run home Jack run home oh, Jack. Jack run, run home. I say it to Jack <laughs> all the time from uh from <laughs> Avatar or right. Run Home Jack. <laughs> and also like the Jack from Rooster Teeth. Like Run Home Jack. Hello. And they're probably sitting there like, what? And no, they, they think about it for a second. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I think those two scenes and then I also love just the Phil Collins cameo just being thrown oh, yeah. in there. I love I that he's just... I was on the set that day to see Phil Collins because I'm a big, you know, it was like the, it was the early 90s, end of the 80s and everyone was big Phil Collins fans back then. Like, mm -hmm. what are gonna do? We gotta go to the set, check him out. <laughs> And, uh, super nice, guy. super cool guy. Uh, also, I haven't talked to you or seen you in a hot. I mean, we talked, but we haven't seen each other. I know. Since the uh, I know. Dodgers won the World Series, get mm. Tampa Rays. So I know, I know, I know. I was like, I'm gonna pay <laughs> for LA that Dodgers. one later. I know. I was like, I'm gonna pay for that one later. But I was like, hey, at least small town team. What Phil and I are Dodgers though, Sarah. What about them Dodgers? What about looking, them Dodgers? They're looking real good. They're looking really, really. <laughs> Really beastly you, out there at the end of there. At least Phil was like nice enough to like text me during the whole like thing, and he's just like, Dodgers are doing real well, and Dodgers are real point. good. Them yeah, and them Lakers, so. them Dodgers and Lakers. I know people are from all over the world out here, and shout out to everyone around the world, around the country. LA is a championship city right now. We're getting the champions right now. Pro so. Also, Dang. we got uh, we got <laughs> hockey. <laughs> we won hockey, <laughs> so that's all I'm gonna say is we got hockey this year. <laughs> Well, you we got, got the lightning. Small town team making it to the World Series is no is nothing to joke about. 
Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. So <laughs> well, we miss you and I will see you next time you're Great in LA. See you, Sarah. Happy Hopefully holidays. it's me moving, but happy I holidays know. to you guys. <laughs> they had everybody out there. So how to save it, Jobs? How to save it for me? I'm going to see Safe and soon. I was doing like all that stuff for him. I talked to him more than I think you do. The song's amazing. I love it. It oh, is. Oh. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, all Alice. Right. Bye, bye, guys. Bye, Sarah. Bye. Time for our last guest, which is who? Wait, wait, name? hold on. I, I, we need to. Zucchini's in the house. What's up? Bring more people in. No, we got Sam the Hour. We can cut off. So for? let's bring it in. Let's bring in our last person. Ready? Okay. Who's it going to be? I thought I'm going to be. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Well. Hold on a Let's bring in Safe in one yeah, time. Let me bring Saban. in Safe in. And then who's our last person? Uh, last person is. Right, it's on my phone. Safe in, what's up? What's up? Hi. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming in. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You paused. Oh no. Are you here? There oh, you no. go. Hi. Where are you at? You on the what? in Florida? What's going on? I see Happy I'm out here. Uh, out in Disney, you know? Got to play here. Uh, you working or you playing? Working. Working. So Andrew Sapin is an amazing artist from Florida. Just dropped a new song called Secret Lover. Secret Lover. Also my home. Let's go check him out on Spotify. Uh, share us your favorite memory of Hook right now one time. Oh, my God. Well, we were just watching it last night, too. too. Okay. Did you just see I my, I sent a post, you know? Yeah. And, um, and what, do you, what did you think seeing a new time in a new, new moment? Oh, still as great as the time that I saw it. You're like, question, who's this time? angry kid? Who's this angry Asian kid? Why is he so angry? <laughs> now it's a little different, it different now you. that you know me watching it. It's a different, when yeah. Watched it when you didn't know me. Knowing you now, it's it's a lot different. But uh, I'm like, Carly and I were talking about it. We were like, what what happened when you died? Oh, I'm good. Like, what did they I'm do good. with your body? They just left war. their body. There was no. They needed more love. There's That's a loss in the middle of war. You're in the middle of the war grounds. Things happen. You can't be doing nothing. My, my man's grab, dead. At least you <laughs> grab the body. Later on, we can go back. They grab the body, right? At least. Grab the body. We'll we're in the middle of war. Just pay tribute, it. pay tribute, yeah. Exactly. exactly. Pay yeah, like, we're so gonna nice. go. The Lost Boys went back and had a cup of Bobo, poured a little out for Rufio <laughs> back at the Never Tree. <laughs> it up, was like, you know, one time we're gonna write some rap songs for them. You know, oh, tribute, my. tribute out. I know the Rufio. tribute. The the uh, the Rufio tribute band. I'll start it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I miss you, bro. And, I love you. Happy and, holidays. Love Hope you, to see you soon. Thank love you for coming in. Thank you. Bye. Andrew Sapin in the house. Yeah, I promise him. I'm going to bring him. So who's the last person? Who's last our last? Person, uh, our last, um, Conroe, Conroe Bretts. Yeah. Oh, oh, Bretts. Bretts. Right there. Oh, it's like right there. Yes. All right. That's the last VIP. It's the end of our hour, and we have one more person, Comrade Bratz in the he Yo, up. what's, yo, what's Whoa! up? Where's the Christmas hat with the Santa hat? What's up, Comrade Bratz? I'm doing really well. How how are you? How have you guys? I'm doing well. We're and the year we made good. it. We made it through 2020. We made it. It's our last show of the year. We last show of the year. And, and thank you for guesting me in for the last one. I feel actually really honored. And thank you so much for taking my enthusiasm and all that. It's just it means a lot. Well, thank you for what DMing and, and getting us to get on the VIP list. People that want to guarantee to get into the live stream can go and get go into Al's DMs, slide into the DMs. And then and book, tell me you watch the film. We'll tell you watch the film. We'll kind of what you want to say about it. Then we we'll get then, you in. Yes. Two a week. So I'll comrade. Promise, even though I didn't get you in the VIP, I promise I will get pull you in. And that's what I did. And Andrew. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, uh, talk to us, Conrad Brass. Talk to us about Hook. Talk to us, Neverland. Talk to us, Rufio Hook, Peter Pan. So, so um, so. One thing before that, I, my brother, my older brother played um, Captain Hook um, for Peter Pan when I was younger and I got to watch him play and I was like one of the minor roles. So I was really happy that you guys chose Hook because it kind of reminded me of that. Oh, that's great. Aww, that's, nice. that's great. And what is your favorite memories or favorite scenes in the movie? So, you feel that step one? That, that, so that's a good question. I, I personally love the baseball scene. Yeah, I, me I mean, too. I, I mean, I know I'm from Seattle and, my, and I'm a Yankee fan, but I like. How's I always, that possible? Seattle Yankee fan? What are you doing, Conrad Bratz? <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, I just, uh, but yeah, I just grew up playing playing baseball, and I remember hitting a game winning home run, and just you seeing, did. Yes, I did, and it was just really awesome and touching to see a baseball scene there, oh, and then 
Jack hitting a run home Jack. Run home Jack. Run home, Run home, Jack. Jack. But the thing about it too is their costumes were so awesome. Awesome, so good. And the way the diamond and the way they, you know, the imagination of putting this thing with pirates playing baseball that they don't know what they're doing and they stealing bases and strikes and uh, it was just really charming the way they put it together. It was so beautiful. Definitely. And I also love, I also was super surprised that like, you know, when Robin Williams was playing Peter Pan, he just completely forgot when he was an adult as yeah. well too, about like his, all of his Peter Pan adventures. Like I would have thought he would have at least had a tiny bit of a memory or had an yeah. idea. So I think, I, never learned, I think you forget the stuff. It's like dreaming, you know? So that's why you always forget things. Maybe. Is it because of that? I think, you know, when Tink says at no, the I'm end, saying. I'm I'm in that place in between when you're dreaming and awake, you can still remember your dreams. Like that's where she'll always love Peter Pan. Like, but I think that's what Neverland is. It's like a dream, you know, like your dreams, you can't really remember them. Yeah, but that's true. So I think that's what Neverland is like a dream place that you can't really remember. So you have like I have memories of different things that come in and out, and sometimes you can't remember what's going on what's there. Exactly. And I think that's the dream kind of like scape of between Neverland and the real world. Hmm. I'm just speculating. I'm not a science. I'm not a Neverland scientist, but I think it's something like that. I feel like too, because based on the fact you always don't remember things, and you don't remember. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah, we don't want to go down huh? that road. <laughs> Lost boys forever, forever and ever, and ever and ever. What I mean, about? Oh. Yes. And then, and then another scene I really, I mean, another thing I found surprising was Peter Pan, Robin Williams' character decided to go with I think it was Wendy's granddaughter as opposed to like as opposed to like Wendy I if, if, I, if I was Peter Pan I would have tried just being with Wendy, Wendy honestly no, but he had to let it, you know sometimes the lost boys are a little slow on the roll you know what I'm saying and many true. guys we lose our we lose our shot sometimes that girl's there and you miss your chance you miss your shot yeah you miss your shot he obviously missed his shot twice three times he had to wait not to wendy's daughter to wendy's granddaughter it took peter a long ass you time to take that, shot. take that shot definitely oh my god but then he finally took, took the shot now he took that shot you are from never let me tell you something lost boys take time he sometimes is a take lost time. boy oh my god that make a lot of sense shout out to moira though moira you know she was a dime <laughs> gwyneth paltrow saw gwyneth paltrow no 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 he was wendy was wendy was Gwyneth Paltrow's Young Wendy. Young Wendy, yeah, yeah. Young Wendy, things. Also, I've, I've also have a question. Did did um did Captain Hook die at the end? Because I saw the crocodile like. Death. That's a good question. That's a That's good, a good question. question. He disappeared because remember they, they went they swept through like we don't know where he went. I think Neverland like like uh my assistant Bridget says to me about uh Avatar when we watch Avatar and I ask all these scientific questions scientific. and she's always like don't science Avatar. Don't science it because it's not going to work out for you. And I think it's the same thing with Neverland. Don't science, science Neverland. Yeah. Obviously, we can't science it because they're eating imaginary food. If you're eating imaginary food. How are you going to science it? We don't know. He could have disappeared into thin air. He could have became the crocodile. In their imagination, the hook um, got disappeared. We don't but know. But in the hook reality, went. probably he went somewhere. He might have went back in time. He might become a child. We don't know what Hook did. Hook did. He, he, he's not there at that moment. Yeah, and then I found it interesting at the end too, where they left. Um, they they didn't lock the you know the window and all. I, I I thought that was like really interesting and really cool. That was interesting. Plus, you know, it's cold in England. Like that's a big heating bill. That's a big window to leave open. Exactly. No. I love that. No basement. screen though. I love the no basement. screen. Bugs no. can fly in at night. No, I don't know if I, I can leave a window open for that long. No, I love to open the windows. But the that bugs way. fly in. Well, and you can't have you can't snow. have preventing bug preventing. What are you talking about? It's not one small around. window. That's like a big walk through window. Like you could, I mean, a, literally a friggin' don't logicalize. Like a don't bird can fly in there. It's fine. Imaginary word. You don't have to worry about robbers this. for sure. Yes, robbers for sure. <laughs> Conrad Brass, dude, thank you so much for joining us. Not on this episode, but throughout the season, we definitely Seriously, appreciate season. you. Thank Happy you. holidays. Yeah, and thank thank you so much. And also, um, before I forget, thank you so much for wishing me happy birthday in October. And that, oh, that shout out oh, that, that 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 made that made my day too. So, oh, I appreciate oh, it. So thank you, Conrad real. Bratz. Happy oh, holidays. Happy, happy holidays. holidays and Merry Christmas too. Merry Christmas. Too. Merry Christmas. So that was it.
that was it. That's it. I don't want to say bye. We gotta say goodbye. No. Where are we? Gonna, they're gonna cut us off soon. So check this out. Let's talk about something. Thank you guys so much for joining us this whole exactly. year on this adventure of Monday Cinema Club. We're this gonna continue in 2020. 2021. We're gonna continue in. Yeah, we're gonna get our things together. But you know, let's take a few weeks. Like everyone, take some time off. It's been a rough year. That's rough, buddy. buddy. It's rough. I mean, for everybody watching it and the whole time from beginning to until the end, it means a lot to us. And, and I love you guys so much. And this is the only thing in a, during the entire quarantine time. It's like something to look looked mm -hmm. up for. And we just find a reason to um, connect and talk about it. Just film, just imagination, just the, like art, like just escape from yeah. escape from this reality. It's all it is. And, and it's for the thing. And inspire, inspire for us, us to learn more things. things, especially me. I'm not from me here. Also. You too, you learn a lot of uh, new language. Yes. So we're gonna, we're excited and, to see uh, some new movies for everybody. Re revisit some old movies we've seen in the past together exactly. and watch some new stuff that we've never seen and just exactly. get inspired. Exactly. Yes. Because of this stuff, we watched a lot of film and I, lo I learned a lot of stuff. And then I hope you guys enjoy the whole show for a whole year. Um, see you guys 2021. So Merry uh, Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. Year. Happy, Happy year. holidays. Happy, Happy Hanukkah. Holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Happy everything. Happy everything. Kwanzaa. Happy... Huh? Bangarang. Huh? See you in Neverland. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, you guys.